So what, what makes a great processor in that? Oh, yeah. if you just look at its performance versus everybody else, it's, you know, the size of it, the, you know, usability of it. So it's not specific, some kind of element that makes it beautiful. It's just like literally just raw performance. Is that how you think of bioprocessors? It's just like raw performance? Of course. It's like a horse so, race. The fastest one wins. Now- You don't care how. <laughs> <laughs> just as well, long as it wins. Well, there's the, the fastest in the environment. Like, right. you know, for years you made the fastest one you could and then people started to have power limits. So then you made the fastest at the right power point. Yeah. And, then, and then when we started doing multiprocessors, like if you could scale your processors more than the other guy, you could be 10% faster on like a single thread, but you have more threads. So there's lots of variability. And then ARM really explored like, you know, they have the A series and the R series and the M series, like a family of processors for all these different design points from like unbelievably small and simple. And so then when you're doing the design, it's sort of like this big palette of CPUs. Mm -hmm. Like they're the only ones with a credible, you know, top to bottom palette. And what, what do you mean a credible uh, top to bottom? Well, there's people who make microcontrollers that are small, but they don't have a fast one. There's people mm -hmm. who make fast processors, but don't have a little, a medium one or a small one. Is that hard to do that full palette? That's, that yeah. seems like a... Yeah, it's a lot of different. So what's the difference between uh, the ARM folks and Intel in terms of the way they're approaching this problem? Well, Intel, almost all their processor designs were, you know, very custom, high-end, you know, for the last 15, 20 years. So the fastest horse possible. Yeah. <laughs> in one horse and, race. Yeah. And they, they, architecturally, they're really good. But the company itself was fairly insular to what's going on in the industry with CAD tools and stuff. And there's this debate about custom design versus synthesis and how do you approach that? I, I'd say Intel was slow on the getting to synthesize processors. ARM came in from the bottom and they generated IP, which went to all kinds of customers. So they had very little say in how the customer implemented their IP. So ARM is super friendly to the synthesis IP environment. Whereas Intel said, we're gonna make this great client chip or server chip with our own CAD tools, with our own process, with our own, you know, other supporting IP and everything only works with our stuff. So is that, um, is ARM winning the mobile platform space in terms of, course, of process? Yeah. And so in, in that, in it, what you're describing is why they're winning. Well, they had lots of people doing lots of different experiments. So they controlled the processor architecture and IP but they let people put in lots of different chips and there was a lot of variability in what happened there. Whereas Intel, when they made their mobile, their foray into mobile, they had one team doing one part, right? So it wasn't 10 experiments. And then their mindset was PC mindset, Microsoft software mindset. And that brought a whole bunch of things along that uh, the mobile world, the embedded world don't do. Do you think it was possible for Intel to pivot hard and win the mobile sure. market? 